Hello everyone. I've had a real treat this last weekend and we were with family outside Glasgow. It was great big hugs after four, 18 months or more. We, we were surprised at how the house and garden had changed from two years ago. In the garden, which was originally a field at the back of their converted farmhouse, there were little areas of delight, beautiful shades of contrasting colour, definitely peaceful, as in a paradise garden. Apparently, it's because my son-in-law's job involves being contained in an office every day of the week, so he relaxes whenever possible by working in the garden, and he's got a lot of skills. In the fresh Scottish air, planning with Sean which patch of it to work on next. Swathes of the lawn have been left as meadow and around them has been well clipped. There are new surprises as you walk around. On the Sunday, we were taken to their life church, which we've been to before, and it was all previously booked in as with ours. Its shape contains a cafe as you walk in where we were welcomed very informally by several ladies at different places, individually, as well as the minister, Chris, and his wife, positioned on the way up to the next level. This led to the large worship room. Inside this as well, we were made to feel welcome in spite of COVID restrictions. Our 45 minutes only service because there was another one fairly soon after, was all conducted by Chris, giving what he called a contemplation using Ignatian spirituality with background mood music. We were quickly taken through Paul's life and his encouragement and teaching to Timothy. Psalm 111 was read first. I won't read that now. We were reminded that the object of being a Christian entailed passing on the faith. As Jesus taught his disciples and they were sent out, so through the Holy Spirit, Paul chose and helped Timothy, appointed him to pass on the message. Some examples were about being thankful. This is from 1, chapter 1 Timothy chapter 1. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. This saying is true and it can be trusted. I was the worst sinner of all, but since I was worse than anyone else, God had mercy on me and let me be an example of the endless patience of Christ Jesus. He did this so that others might put their faith in Christ and have eternal life. I'm sure some of you know that quick quote anyway. And then further on, it was how to pray. First of all, I ask you to pray for everyone. Ask God to help and bless them all and tell God how thankful you are for each of them. Pray for kings and others in power as we pray today for the meeting between Putin and Biden so that we may live quiet and peaceful lives as we worship and honour God. And then it was advice to Timothy from chapter four. Teach these things and tell everyone to do as you say. Don't let, let anyone make fun of you just because you're young. Set an example for others by what you say and do, as well as by your love, faith, and purity. And then lastly, in chapter six, on contentment. People think religion is supposed to make you rich. And religion does make your life rich by making you content with what you have. We didn't bring anything into this world and we won't take anything with us when we leave. So we should be satisfied just to have food and clothes. 
afterwards, after this, there was a short video for children and we moved on to prayer after seeing a very moving clip from Haiti showing the poverty stricken children playing in terrible squalor. We prayed for all Christians there who, who make up only 20% of the population. The other 80% are voodoo worshippers. We all prayed for them. And then silently for all our friends, relations and neighbours. Then after a couple of notices, we came away. It was all very friendly. It was refreshing to go to a different kind of church again. There was no liturgy. The minister wore casual clothes. It worked for a lot of people. Next week, church is planned differently for them. And then the next day on our way home through Glasgow main station, there was a beautiful demonstration of girls Scottish dancing, apparently as a welcome to Czechoslovakians coming to play football against Scotland. Lots of men in kilts must have taken the day off to attend. Luckily, we didn't have to buy anything or touch anything as we walked across to our train passing through to Warrington and then to London. We were allowed to board a very clean train early. Weren't we blessed to have had that wonderful weekend with the family? Then yesterday we were told, weren't we, that Warrington is now considered an area where we mustn't leave? in case of spreading the new Indian virus. We were very fortunate. I don't know whether you've been able to get away, but let's pray before we finish. We pray to you, Lord God, at this strange time. May we too be content with what we have from day to day, if we have food, clothing, a home and friends, and above all, a faith in you. Lord Jesus, be with us on every step of the way. Please be with all who are anxious this day, anxious about losing their job or their home or their health or their family. In your precious name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you all for listening. Bye for now.